Good evening and blessings to you this season of Lent. May God's blessings be with you as we worship our Lord and Savior. Let us begin with our gathering song, uh, Only by Grace. He took our sins and carried them to the cross, but it, was what, but it was with his wounds that we are healed. Thank you for your mercy and sacrifice for us. Amen. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And his stripes we are healed. Let us sing at the foot of the cross. Oh, 
our logos, our word for today. I may have sent the wrong one, I do not recall, uh, to all of our church members at Christ the King. Um, the text that um, I'd like you to look at tonight is actually Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. So I'll let you open up your Bibles to Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31. So Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31, says these words. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or know to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. And then if you would, turn to Philippians chapter 2. And this has been our, our text for our midweek Lent service. So Philippians chapter 2 says these words, starting with verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not re regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. Hear these words. And I'm missing my sermon for today. Where did we go? It was just here. I may have to do it by winging it. Jenny is uh, frantically looking for it. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> it's a good one. definition of a man who can't see well, literally two feet in front of him. So, Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Blessed Lent to you this evening. I hope my message to you finds you well and blessed. Verse 5 for Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And as I was preparing for this, I actually prefer the New International Version translation a lot better. Where it says the, uh, that same verse in this way. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Let me say that again. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Now these days we have, well, many attitudes about many things. We have attitudes about the chaos, about the medical stuff and the virus and things and so forth that is happening to us that we are facing. 
We have an attitude in regards to the loss of the world that we will never see again. We have attitudes about our children, our family members who are at home all the time. Need I say more? We have attitudes. So how do our attitudes work in regards to our faith? Well, let's look at Jesus for our answers. Now, as we read from the Gospels, Jesus definitely showed lots of attitude, especially as we read from a couple of weeks ago, when he entered the temple and overturned the money changers' tables and boldly proclaimed, Stop making my father's house a marketplace! He had an attitude. And there were other places, too, where he would calm the sea with a simple wave of his hand and a word. And then he had an attitude when he was healing people who longed to be made whole once again. And blessed are the poor of spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. He had an attitude. Yet here in our Philippians text, the Apostle Paul, who wrote these words, wants us to have an attitude, a same mind like Jesus. So don't get me wrong here, I'm not suggesting that you be like the Savior of the world, how Jesus was, how Jesus is. Rather, this is a calling for us to take upon ourselves an attitude of self-sacrificing humility and love for others. What do I mean? Well, I believe we should take upon ourselves three goals or tasks, just like Jesus would have. Hear these words from Luke 9, verse 51, where it says these words. The days drew near for him to be taken up. So he, meaning Jesus, set his face to go to Jerusalem. And at this point in Luke, nothing else mattered except for his particular goal. To save the world from sin and death. And this was only chapter 9 of Luke with a whole lot more to go before the cross and resurrection come into play. He had an attitude to fulfill his particular calling, and we do too. So I think in three ways. With an attitude of self-sacrifice and humility and love for others. So number one. Number one, take care of yourself by faith. Make time every day to be in prayer to open up scripture, worship as often as you are able, be in silence with God. Take time every single day to be with God, just you and your creator. Number two, build the kingdom of God. I talk a lot about this and a lot of people ask me why, for I believe that building the kingdom of God is important in nourishing our faith. So how do we do this? We are called to invite. We are called to invite, to share the story of Jesus with others so they too can experience this amazing grace. Now most of us are probably, well, adhering to social distancing. And by all means, please do so. But know this about social distancing. It, it has only to do, social distancing does not have anything to do with physical distancing. There's a difference between the two. Physical, don't touch your neighbor. Stay six feet apart. Don't get sick. But the social distancing is a choice. Social distancing is something that I believe becomes an excuse for us. Beyond the health concerns and so forth, which are viable, but I want you to hear that when we make excuses of trying to relate to others, for sharing this faith to others, call someone, text someone, pray with people, Text someone, I don't care, use smoke signals if you need to. Invite others to the kingdom of grace and love that you so love very much. Be the invitation, build the kingdom of God, and talk this story that you love about Christ Jesus. And then number three, 
Strengthen the body of Christ. Now, the bottom line with this is that we, the faithful, need each other to grow in our own faith. We love God, and we love each other. So don't forget the faith community that you are a part of, that you're a part of. So just like, you know, contacting, you know, the stranger out on the street, again, six feet apart, the person at the grocery store, or whoever it may be, the people who are part of our faith community need your contact too. Pray for them. And if you don't have a faith community that you're a part of, know this, at Christ the King Lutheran Church, you are, we are always open to your presence, if it's virtually or physically, on a Sunday morning. So have an attitude like Christ. Take care of yourself with faith. Build the kingdom of God. Strengthen the body of Christ. This is your attitude. This is your goal. May God bless you. May God bless and keep you in his grace. So have an attitude. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us now sing our song of response, Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. us in your likeness. You made us guardians of your good creation and left the earth in our care. All through our weary years and our silent tears, you did not abandon us to ourselves, but sought us, sought us out in love. When we were captive in Egypt, you did not abandon us. When we wandered in the wilderness, you did not abandon us. When we turned to false gods, you did not abandon us. Through your holy prophets, you called us to return in your graciousness, to your mercy and to your steadfast love. In the crowning act of love, you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For you sent Jesus not to condemn the world, but to save the world from sin. Through the death and the cross, we who were once far off have been brought near by the body of the blood of Christ. So on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken and given for you. He also took the cup and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, comes, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember Christ's life among us. 
his association with outcasts, his eating with sinners, his healing of the sick, his care for the poor. Send, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine, that we who share this meal may become a holy communion, the body of Christ in the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray that prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for all of you, the people of God. Let us partake. The body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. We've all received the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We can strengthen us always and keep us in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ and our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before we close, just a couple of announcements. So as soon as we're done here on Facebook Live, uh, please stay tuned for uh, Owen Myers and his reflections um, about tonight. Um, and then after Owen is done, um, I'm inviting all of you to be a part of a Bible study through the, uh, about the Gospel of Mark. It's not too late. Actually, we're just going to start. So if you'd like to come, please, if you're a church member, you should have that on your email as far as a link to me. Uh, if you would like a link, uh, you can instant message me. And then tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we have a check-in with me. I want to see how all of you are doing. Let me know how all of this is transforming in your life. This is some change. I'd like to hear from you. And then on Friday at 10 o'clock, we're doing something absolutely special. Uh, Kathy Ham, actually Mrs. Kathy Ham, is going to lead us in godly play. So Friday at 10 o'clock. And then finally, uh, if you have an offering, first I want to say thank you to those who have been contributing on a regular basis. But if you'd like to make an offering, you may do so electronically. I can, I can give you those links. Um, church members, it's uh, on your email that I give to you. Also, you can give it directly to the church. It will be safe and secure. But thank you very much for partaking in that offering, that gift for your church. As things change, your church continues to provide you with the good news of Jesus Christ, to provide ministries. So please, give off me. Without further ado, may God's blessings be with you. And again, I know there's been lots of changes in our world. I know there's been lots of changes. May God's blessings be with you. Know that by God's grace, we will get through all of these things. We'll get through all of these things. There is always resurrection awaiting for us. I hope you'll walk that journey with me. May God's blessings be with you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we'll see you here again on Facebook Live Sunday morning as we enter in with the palms and the passion. God's blessings. Take care.